Hello everybody, welcome back. I am continuing to work in the Christmas journals here that were, that were putting together. It's rather late in the day today on Tuesday and I need to have a video ready for you for tomorrow morning. I've been working on um, just, you know, kind of putting things together and doing some of the sewing and the stamping and stuff. So the last couple days I've been spending a lot of time working in them and usually as I'm working I get an idea of what I want to do for the video. Um, but as I've continued to work, I, I was coming up dry. But I think now I'm, I've got an idea that I think hopefully will work out on camera. If not, we'll learn together. But what I'm gonna do today is work in The Little Lost Angel and work on repairing this cover where it had the, had the two spots that were torn. So that's, that's my plan. I came up with an idea, I think, of how I want to fix that. So I'll share that with you in just a minute. If there's time, I'll go ahead and put on the book corners too because these corners, they are a little beat up and so they could use some, some pretty corners. But first, I have some happy mail to share with you and then also I got in the tag swap that I was participating in, I got my first tag and I wanted to share it with you because I like the idea and it's definitely gonna go in my idea book. So go ahead and get yourselves comfy or get yourselves ready to craft along and we'll be back right after this. The first thing I wanted to share with you is this cute tag I put into swap with two different partners and this gal's name is Lori and I haven't received my second one yet but um, this came last week in the mail and I just thought this was so cute this appears to be some kind of vellum like uh, it's got the tree already on it and snowflakes and um, all the little gold sprinkles and accents it's really pretty and then she just layered it on some music paper and then she embossed a piece of cardstock back here it's got a snowflake design and put a pocket and it's just so cute this feels almost like mulberry paper I'm not exactly sure what it is but um, it's got the the dots in it again so it's really neat paper I really like it and then she accented it with the buttons and then layered some little presents here these look like stickers vellum stickers but it's just so cute and then of course in the back she had tucked in a cute little printable of jingle bells and then a gingerbread joy tea bag which I'm excited to try this this is decaf I believe is it decaf maybe not anyway um it's got the ginger and cinnamon so it sounds really good I really um, get cravings for cinnamon in the winter, and I don't know why. And then this is her cute little note that she sent me. So yeah, I'm excited to try out the tea, but I guess I'm, I should definitely double check if it's decaf or not. I don't think it is. Good. That means I can drink it during the day. So yeah, this morning I made the unfortunate discovery that I am out of coffee. <laughs> I'm out of caffeinated coffee, so I had to make myself decaf this morning, and then I'm just really stuffy and kind of, um, you know, just your basic everyday allergy sniffles kind of thing, and so I thought I would try a different allergy medication, but it said it might make me drowsy, so no caffeine, and then uh, drowsy-inducing <laughs> meds do not, <laughs> do not work well together. <laughs> Anyway, so definitely, I'm not dragging as much as I thought because I also have some chocolate-covered espresso beans and I took a few of those to try and a piece, and I also ate some chocolate, so I'm trying to get my caffeine in other ways, but that's probably more than you care to know, but yeah, so it's been an interesting day so far. So this is from my friend Pam, and this was a lovely surprise. It was just so sweet, and I had seen her making these on her channel. She said she was sending out happy mail, and surprise, I got some. So I'm very excited about that. So thank you, Pam. Isn't that just the cutest little card? And she already knows I opened it. I already said thank you and everything. But she made these cute little pockets. Look at this. So they're perfect. Like if you want to make these, um, you know, to give as little gifts. She um, shows on her channel how she made these and folded it together. She used her envelope punch board and then she just stiffened the back with a little piece of lightweight cardstock. And then um, she has a bag here full of goodies, just candy and some stuff. 
which I have not opened yet, but you just tuck it in here. Isn't that the cutest? And then, because it was a happy mail, she also gave me um, this cute tag that she made. Isn't that the sweetest? So thank you, Pam. I just love her. I love her butterfly wings. I love the tool, how it has the little sparkles in it. I just think that is the cutest tag. So cute. Just fits right back there. And then there's a candy cane in there too in her card. And then she also sent me some of these really cool butterfly die cuts that she finds at the Dollar Tree. So uh, she uses these in all of her journals and I was asking her where she gets them. And so I think um, I have an idea for the littlest angel. There's um, a page where I think I want to use one of the larger butterflies as a pocket. So thank you. That was very timely. Very timely indeed. So that's my fun little happy mail shares. So I thought I'd share that with you. And if you guys want inspiration and need a cute way to give a gift, well, actually both of these are very cute. This one with the little pocket on the back of the tag. And then also this envelope pocket. Um, I'll link Pam's channel down below. But I just thought I'd share that with you. It was just some couple of really fun ideas. And then of course this will go in my idea book. I have decided that after uh, Christmas stuff is all done and I've finally got these journals finished, I think I would like to work in my idea book because I've got a whole stack now of things to put in it and I don't, I just don't have my idea book really assembled. So that'll be something for us to work on. Okay, so let's get to work here. So my idea, let me take this out. This is what I'm going to use for this spine fabric. So I've, I did figure that out. But my idea I had originally thought I wanted to put a library pocket or something here, but I was just really, it was bothering me that this little girl was going to be covered up. <laughs> so much of that was going to get covered up. And I could maybe just run some lace across, but again, it was just going to cover so much of the image. So what I came up with, the idea, is I copied the same image is on the front, the front, uh, well, not the front, but the inside covers, the inside pages, repeat. So this is the very first page, and it repeats this, that cover here, and then the front cover is repeated on the last page in the book, right there. Unfortunately, it's got some scribbles. I didn't notice that till after I'd already photocopied it. But there it is again. So what I did was I photocopied it. I made a copy on some cardstock, and then I also made a copy on just the regular copy paper. And what I'm gonna try to do is just match this up, um, kind of like patch it, essentially. Hopefully they're in the same scale. Looks like they might be. Just kind of maybe just patch over the part that is torn up. And then I thought I would just make my pocket this this design out of the cardstock. So kind of a layered effect. Um, and then I just went ahead and did the other cover just in case I wanna do something with this somewhere else inside. So I was like, well, as long as I'm photocopying, let's keep photocopying. Okay, so what I see I need to do here first is that I need to do a little extra gluing When I originally got this book, I intended to just use the pages and not use the cover, but the cover is so cute that now that I've switched gears, it's um, presenting some challenges. Okay, so it's missing this outside border, this, this uh, pale border, because I had trimmed the page. But I don't think that's an entirely bad thing. So I'm going to cut this down and then I'm going to figure out just where I want to overlap. I'm probably going to run some trim or lace right there so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter um, that this might not be exactly the right uh, shading on the edge. If that makes sense. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that that's bothering. but. <laughs> So yeah, I just kept kicking ideas around in my mind and I just 
just couldn't come up with anything and finally I thought well just duplicate it I did that once before in another journal and um, I really liked how it turned out so okay so I'm gonna lay this here and so that rip essentially starts at the bottom of the bird I'm just gonna make a mark there and then it comes over to the bunny right about right about here so I think I'm just gonna make a couple of straight cuts and just lay it on there let me move my stuff off my cutter and hope to high heaven I'm right <laughs> exactly the right um, intensity of color but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna um, put the actual pocket over it anyway but this way it kind of fills in the image yeah that just looks a lot better although I guess I should have made that just a little bit taller but we will adapt so I'm going to run some glue along this and we'll just lay this down. So essentially I'm just filling in the background. While I am working, I want to remind you, let's see, you're going to see this Wednesday. So Thursday, I believe, is December 1st. There we go. Look at that. December 1st is when the digital ephemera advent, um, the images begin to be released. So one per day. And just a reminder, I was part of that collaboration and my digital will um, will be available on day 20. So I've got the link below. It's $14.95 and you um, are buying essentially a kit of, of a bunch of creators and every single day a new digital item is unlocked for you just like it would be like when you're opening an advent calendar. So um, I've got the link below, and if you use that link, then I am an affiliate, and then I get a percentage of the sale. But the kit is $14.95, but the overall value is over $100 of items that you're getting, and the images aren't necessarily just Christmas. There's all kinds of different things in there, so it's pretty cool. It's a really neat project, and the lady that is putting it together, Janet, she... Um, I've got her link down below as well, so you can check out her her um, website. And so she does her own digitals, and uh, she's actually an expert at this, so I'm really honored to have been invited. <laughs> yes. um, she saw something she liked, I guess, so thank you. Thank you, Janet, if you're watching. I don't know if she watches my channel or not, but um, yeah, just a reminder that that is actually, you'll begin to get the images unlocked tomorrow, December 1st, but you can buy the kit. They were doing a pre-sale, but go ahead and if you haven't bought it yet and you still want it, it's not too late. Just go to her site, which is linked below and um, use my link to get there and then you can buy it. Okay, so yeah, very exciting. And then um, I will have my digital that I created, just mine obviously, in my shop available just my digital but I don't want to take sales away from her so uh, she part of the rules are that I can have it for sale elsewhere but I can't have it for free elsewhere um, and that's fine but I think I would like to give it you know I'd like to give her product and her idea her collaboration the chance to succeed and not just steal the thunder out from under her however 
If you want just my digital that I made, it will be in my shop also on December 1st. So I haven't decided what I'm pricing it at yet, but it won't be a ton <laughs> anyway. So yeah, so you have two ways to do that. So if you want the whole collaboration, go to her site. And then if you want just my digital, you can also go to my Etsy shop, which is linked below. Okay, so we've got that here. So what I was thinking, I'm going to trim this down. And I thought I would just make like a, just basically a pocket to cover, although if I make it go across, I end up cutting off her head. So I'm not sure. I don't know, I'm just gonna have to play with this for a minute and figure out, figure out just how I wanna do this. And I won't put the lace trim on until the very last thing. Also, I will be uh, punching a hole to put a tie, tie through there. So that way, you know, for the closure for the journal. So um, the lace will actually kind of go last but we need to get this fixed first. So, it would be really kind of cute if I could like trace the outline, just outline the shape, but then maybe come over here and then go down that way. Okay, we're gonna try it. If we don't like it, the worst thing that's happened is that all I have to do is recopy this and start again. <laughs> Not the end of the world. But I think that tuck spots that have interesting shapes are kind of fun. And Bunny's gonna lose his whiskers. Sorry, Bun Bun. Another reminder, um, Kathy Lesage, if you're watching, I still have your giveaway prize and I still haven't heard from you at my at my um, email. So I'm gonna give it another week or so, but if I don't hear from you and get your address, I'm gonna have to draw again and pick a new winner of all the people that um, entered my surprise giveaway for the Christmas books. I would show them to you, but um, currently they're in the other room waiting to, with all my stuff to mail out, so. Why is my dog? My dog is barking and she is so convinced that she needs something. I don't know what it is, but she is pretty sure that she wants to be fed again or something today. Okay, so what do you guys think? How's that looking up there? Do you think that would work? It's not very thick. Maybe I should have backed it on something else. I still could. That would give it kind of like a little border. I could back it on some brown to tie in with the bunnies. Yeah, let's um, lay this down and back it on some brown. I was just using Fabri-Tac, now I'm switching and I'm using the Aileen's. Although Aileen's does tend to wrinkle a little bit, I've noticed. Probably because I put too much on. Anyway, this should give it some stiffness so that when you're tucking things in and behind it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't tear. This is just your regular lightweight cardstock. I'm gonna line this up at the bottom. I'm gonna leave an edge over here. And then I'm gonna cut it out with a slight edge around it as well. So it'll be kind of like if I had distressed the edge, you know, gives it some distinction. Okay. Well, that's just getting everywhere, isn't it? 
me and my glue difficulties lately. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera. I hope I'm not. Hopefully that image stabilization is working. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely going to be a quieter week this week. Um, last couple weeks, I feel like I've gone, 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 which I have. I've had a lot going on. But this week, nice and quiet, so I'm really going to work on these really hard and, and um, try to get these done. I doubt they'll be done by the end of the week, but certainly by hopefully next Wednesday, if not, uh, we'll see. But yeah, I want to get these done and out into the world, so, so we can move on to some other stuff. But you know, I did decide to make four journals, so. <laughs> each one's a little different, but each one has its own own little things that need to be done to it, you know? So anyway, I was at the point to where I needed to get some of the sewing done um, if I was gonna sew. So I did that and then I'm gonna have to um, make a bunch of larger size journal cards and tags for The Littlest Angel, because it is a big book. But I have lots of images and things that I want to make into tags. This is not the best cutting, but it, it gets the idea across. Okay, right through here, it doesn't look so swift. So I made a casserole for dinner that um, I've never made before. I was going through recipes a few weeks ago and um, looking for something else, but I ran across this one and it sounded really good and I thought, it would be a nice one to have in my collection for just when you want something easy, but it's called Chicken Cordon Blue Casserole. Okay, look at this. Aha, okay, that did exactly what we want it to do. Yay! So now, if I have a tag, we're gonna, we're gonna simulate a tag here. When I have a tag, it'll just slide right in there and you still have the image. Oh, good, perfect. So let's glue that down. So yeah, just kind of a low key video today. And also we have to finish reading, reading and find out what happens to Artaban because we're on our final chapter. chapter. Yeah, yesterday I had the Christmas music on and trying to really get into the whole Christmas spirit while I was making stuff. My husband was, where was he? Oh, he had kind of the day off, so he was out of the house for a little bit, so that made it easier. Okay, that feels so much better now. Um, on this back section, I think that's where I'm going to put my label, where I put this book was made by. So I should probably do that before, before I put on the corner. Yeah, I'm thinking blue. Blue would look lovely. Right there, see? Voila, problem solved. Don't have any of those on um, cream, cream colored cardstock. That's fine. Try to get these back in the bag here really quick. Yeah, occasionally I just sit down and stamp up a bunch and then ink them up in different colors. And as you can see, that was very handy. <laughs> Oops, I got, grabbed two on accident, that's fine. I'll end up using, using another blue one because three of these journals are blue. I'm gonna just kind of grunge that up there a little bit. so it's not quite so white. And we'll glue this down and then we will do the corners. Yep, so once we're done recording, I'm gonna run down and grab that casserole. I'll have to tell you how it turned out. Yes, um, it's got um, chicken, obviously, cube, uh, cooked cube chicken. 
and noodles and diced ham and diced Swiss cheese. And then you mix up the Campbell's soup with a little sour cream and milk, pour it over the top, and then um, brown some brown some uh, breadcrumbs in butter and add a little Parmesan to it. Put that on the top and then you bake it for 30 minutes. And truly the whole thing took not very long. <laughs> you know, cause while it was, I already had the chicken cooked. Um, I already had it cooked and cubed and it was out in the freezer. So I didn't really have to do anything to the chicken except get it out and make sure it was thawed. And then um, while the noodles were cooking, I just quickly diced up the ham and the, and the, um, the cheese and then put it all together. I think it took me like 15 minutes, which I love. I love it when things are that fast. Okay. I'm not cutting this apart yet just because I want to keep it all together. Ideally, I would have probably done that before I stick these corners on. Oops. Now... I think we're gonna use these bronze ones. They're not, he has copper, bronze, and then like a dark silver. Copper, silver, kind of a goldy bronze. And so they're not quite as bright as what I edged the book in, but I'm trying to get this put back together. But I think it'll be close enough. I think it'll do the trick. And those need to be on before I can glue the lace to the edges anyway, so might as well do it. The one thing you'll probably never see me do on camera is um, do the spines, the sewing in of the signatures. And the reason for that is because it, they pretty much fight me almost every single time. <laughs> so. Now I'm using Fabri-Tac. I've seen people use Fabri-Tac. I've seen them use Art Glitter Glue. I've seen them use E6000 or um, Glossy Accents. So these are bigger than the ones I usually use. So we'll see what happens here. So we just stick it in there. Lay this down. And then I have my little pliers with the flat edge. You could use needle nose pliers, you can use these jewelry pliers, whatever you like. Just give it a little squeeze, clamp it down. And there it is. And I keep wiping up all the glue bits. Okay, this one's ready to drip, so we'll, we'll keep going. But on these books where the corners are pretty beat up, that's this is a nice way to, to make them look pretty again. Yeah, okay. Let's do that one from this direction. I like to go clamp it down from the outside corner in, going that way. Give it a nice press so that you've got even press pressure all the way across. This one looks like it's buckling a little bit right there. Okay. This is just a dry paper towel still. Same one. <laughs> I might have to get out a wet one because it's left fuzzies there. Anyway, I'll have to wash that off with a little bit of a damp rag there, but it does help get the glue off. Okay, next one. I should use corners more. I don't, but a lot of times the books are are fine. They don't really necessarily need, need their corners to be done. I'm going to set that under the glue so if it drips, it lands where I want it to. So do you guys all, um, do you, any of you have favorite things that you like to add into your journals, different um, 
elements that you like to make sure are in each journal or do you just like to change it up every time? I have a few things I tend to do. I still need to um, really write down and identify what my style is because I feel like I've done a lot of copying of other people's styles, but I don't I don't know what my style, my actual style is. So um, I don't know what you would call it. I don't <laughs> you know, it's easy when you're trying um, other people's techniques to get caught up in that, but that's not really what you do, you know? And that's okay. There's no no harm in trying the different techniques and imitating. That's how we learn. So, but then at a certain point, you have to kind of figure out what are the things that make your projects uniquely yours. I'm going to trim that off just a bit. There we go. Yeah, what kinds of things do you do that make your project, kind of put your stamp on your project, your style? I don't know. I'm really good at imitating, but... Okay. I wanted to give that a little trim, it looks like. Okay, so here's the front, and it will have the fabric. The fabric's gonna wrap around, so it's unfortunately gonna lose a little bit of the title, but it will look like that. And here's the pretty edges, the pretty corners. And here's the back. And um, again, when I add the lace or whatever on the back, well, it's gonna go on the inside. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with that pattern that shows there, because I was looking back at my video and I realized I should have put this picture on at an angle like the original design was, and that would have that would have been perfect, but I didn't do that. So I don't know, I'll have to figure something out right there. That probably isn't it. <laughs> I punched these gold um, heart, uh, stars out of some gold foil paper, but I thought I might want them, but so far I haven't, I haven't really used them yet. Okay, so that's it for today. I know it's kind of short and sweet, which is probably good, but it worked. <laughs> so, so that's also very good. Yep, so I'm continuing working. We'll see where we're at on Friday, what we're going to do. I So on this whole series, I have not had a plan in advance of what to do. Usually I kind of know what to do for each video, but I've just kind of been rolling with it. And as each thing comes up, then, you know, each time the film comes up, I just work on whatever I'm working then. So I hope you guys don't mind that, but um, it's been kind of nice. And then that way I don't have to... I can work on things as I need to do them in the order I need to do them and not not have to worry about following a certain set of steps or whatever, per se. Okay, that is it. Get that cleared away, and then we will read our final chapter. Okay, ready for the conclusion of the story of the other wise man. I'm glad that you guys have been enjoying it. It's been fun to read, and... Um, We'll have to see what other other things we can find to read as we're going through the Christmas season. Okay, so he's been on his long journey and he still hasn't found the king that he was seeking. Um, it's basically taken him his whole life and he's gone to Egypt and Greece and he was seeking the family and he still has the one pearl left to give, okay? This is called a pearl of great price. Three and thirty years of the life of Artaban had passed away, and he was still a pilgrim and a seeker after light. His hair, once darker than the cliffs of Zagros, was now white as the wintry snow that covered them. His eyes, that once flashed like flames of fire, were dull as embers, smoldering among the ashes. Worn and weary and ready to die, but still looking for the king, he had come for the last time to Jerusalem. 
He had often visited the holy city before and had searched through all its lanes and crowded hovels and black prisons without finding any trace of the family of Nazarenes who had fled from Bethlehem long ago. But now it seemed as if he must make one more effort, and something whispered in his heart that, at last, he might succeed. It was the season of the Passover. The city was thronged with strangers. The children of Israel, scattered in far lands all over the world, had returned to the temple for the great feast, and there had been a confusion of tongues in the narrow streets for many days. But on this day there was a singular agitation visible in the multitude. The sky was veiled with a portentous gloom, and currents of excitement seemed to flash through the crowd like the thrill which shakes the forest on the eve of a storm. A secret tide was sweeping them all one way. The clatter of sandals and the soft, thick sounds of bare feet shuffling over the stones flowed unceasingly along the street that leads to the Damascus Gate. Artaban joined company with a group of people from his own country, Parthian Jews who had come up to keep the Passover, and inquired of them the cause of the tumult and where they were going. We are going, they answered, to the place called Golgotha, outside the city walls, where there is to be an execution. Have you not heard what has happened? Two famous robbers are to be crucified, and with them another, called Jesus of Nazareth, a man who has done many wonderful works among the people so that they love him greatly. But the priests and elders have said that he must die because he gave himself out to be the Son of God. And Pilate has sent him to the cross because he said that he was the, quote, King of the Jews. How strangely those familiar words fell upon the tired heart of Artaban. They had led him for a lifetime over land and sea, and now they came to him darkly and mysteriously like a message of despair. The king had arisen, but he had been denied and cast out. He was about to perish. Perhaps he was already dying. Could it be the same who had been born in Bethlehem 33 years ago, at whose birth the star had appeared in heaven, and of whose coming the prophets had spoken? Artaban's heart beat unsteadily with that troubled, doubtful apprehension which is the excitement of old age. But he said within himself, The ways of God are stranger than the thoughts of men, and it may be that I shall find the king at last in the hands of his enemies and shall come in time to offer my pearl for his ransom before he dies. So the old man followed the multitude with slow and painful steps towards the Damascus gate of the city. Just beyond the entrance of the guardhouse, a troop of Macedonian soldiers came down the street, dragging a young girl with torn dress and disheveled hair. As the Magian paused to look at her with compassion, she broke suddenly from the hands of her tormentors and threw herself at his feet, clasping him around the knees. She had seen his white cap and the winged circle on his breast. Have pity on me, she cried, and save me for the sake of the God of purity. I also am a daughter of the true religion, which is taught by the Magi. My father was a merchant of Parthia, but he is dead, and I am seized for his debts to be sold as a slave. Save me from worse than death. Artaban trembled. It was the old conflict in his soul which had come to him in the palm grove of Babylon and in the cottage at Bethlehem. The conflict between the expectation of faith and the impulse of love. Twice the gift which he had consecrated to the worship of religion had been drawn from his hand to the service of humanity. This was the third trial, the ultimate probation, the final and irrevocable choice. Was it his great opportunity or his last temptation? He could not tell. One thing only was clear in the darkness of his mind. It was inevitable, and does not the inevitable come from God? One thing only was sure to his divided heart. To rescue this helpless girl would be a true deed of love, and is not love the light of the soul? He took the pearl from his bosom. Never had it seemed so luminous, so radiant, so full of tender living luster. He laid it in the hand of the slave. This is thy ransom, daughter. It is the last of my treasures which I kept for the king. While he spoke, the darkness of the sky thickened and shuddering tremors ran through the earth, heaving convulsively like the breast of one who struggles with mighty grief. The walls of the house rocked to and fro. Stones were loosened and crashed into the streets. Dust clouds filled the air. The soldiers fled in terror, reeling like drunken men. But Artaban and the girl, whom he had ransomed, crouched helpless beneath the walls of the praetorium. What had he to fear? What had he to live for? He had given away the last remnant of his tribute for the king. He had parted with the last hope of finding him. The quest was over and it had failed. 
But even in that thought, accepted and embraced, there was peace. It was not resignation. It was not submission. It was something more profound and searching. He knew that all was well because he had done the best that he could from day to day. He had been true to the light that had been given to him. He had looked for more, and if he had not found it, if a failure was all that came out of his life, doubtless that was the best that was possible. He had not seen the revelation of life everlasting, incorruptible, and immortal, but he knew that even if he could live his earthly life over again, it could not be otherwise than it had been. One more lingering pulsation of the earthquake quivered through the ground. A heavy tile, shaken from the roof, fell and struck the old man on the temple. He lay breathless and pale with his gray head resting on the young girl's shoulder and the blood trickling from the wound. As she bent over him, fearing that he was dead, there came a voice through the twilight, very small and still, like music sounding from a distance, in which the notes are clear but the words are lost. The girl turned to see if someone had spoken from the window above them, but she saw no one. Then the old man's lips began to move as if in answer, and she heard him say in the Parthian tongue, Not so, my lord, for when saw I thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw I thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? When saw I thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Three and thirty years I have looked for thee, but I have never seen thy face, nor ministered to thee, my king." He ceased, and the sweet voice came again, and again the maid heard it very faintly and far away. But now it seemed as though she understood the words, Verily I say unto thee, inasmuch as thou hast done it unto the least of these, my brethren, thou hast done it unto me. A calm radiance of wonder and joy lighted the pale face of Artaban like the first ray of dawn on a snowy mountain peak. One long last breath of relief exhaled gently from his lips. His journey was ended. His treasures were accepted. The other wise man had found the king. That is not the ending that you were expecting, was it? But because he spent his life serving the king and looking for the king, he found the king. Um, I thought this was interesting, so I thought I would read it too about the author. Henry Van Dyke was a preacher, a university professor, diplomat, poet, translator, and the author of many ins inspirational writings. His most famous work is The Story of the Other Wise Man, one of the best loved and most inspiring of all Christmas classics, celebrating its centennial in 1996. So he wrote that in 1896. Isn't that amazing? That a preacher, a professor, a diplomat, a poet, translator, and author. Crazy, but this this is the one um, I, you know, he's very famous for. But as you read through, it made me wonder if his professorship or what he taught was more of ancient history. I don't know. I didn't go look it up, but, but yeah. So that's a little background on Henry Van Dyke, and that that was the story of the other wise man. I hope you were able to kind of prepare for the Christmas season and for the Advent, um, just kind of a way to get us into thinking about what is the point of Christmas and what is the true, uh, what is our true pursuit at Christmas time? What should we be looking for? What should we be searching for? And um, just remembering, you know, this is of course fiction. There, We don't know if there were three wise men or if there were more than three, there were three gifts, so traditionally we just stick with three, but there could have been more. Um, it's just a really good story to get you thinking. So I hope you guys are doing well and that you're getting ready for the holidays and um, that you're enjoying each and every moment that you have, each and every day, that you're just doing the best that you can, just like Artaban, doing the best you can day to day and in pursuit of the king. So until next time, I hope you will be inspired and do something creative, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.